Are you still testing or already training? Hi, my name is Eric. I work as a test consultant for Shufried and today I want to talk about cognitive training with CogniPlus. So, at first I want to give you a small introduction to CogniPlus. What is it? What can you do with it? Then we're going to see how CogniPlus is working in practice. We're going to see how the um, surface looks like, how you can work with it, how you can enter client data and so on. And at last I want to give you some recommendations for the training planning. So what is CogniPlus? CogniPlus is a computer-based battery for trainings with which cognitive functions can be trained. So in this case we chose a function-specific intervention approach. So each CogniPlus training program is tailored to a specific cognitive function. Um, we decided for this approach because from the literature we know that the specific training of cognitive deficits is more efficient than unspecific training. So the main application areas are um, the training of specific cognitive deficits in various neurological and psychiatric disorders which are typically associated with cognitive deficits. When we developed um, CogniPlus there were some guiding principles. The first one which was very important for us was that we developed it in cooperation with scientific experts. So we have a solid scientific basis and we can be sure that our training is state of the art and it works. The second big issue was that we want to use lifelike scenarios, so it's motivating for the clients or the patients. Then we also wanted to cover a broad difficulty range, so you can use it in different application contexts. It's possible to train even um, severe impaired patients, but also patients with only mild impairments. Another big thing is that um, we have automatic adjustment of the difficulty level, so there's always an individual and appropriate challenge and it's not demotivating for clients because it's easy, either too easy or too hard. And the last big issue was that we want to have a good coordination with our Vienna test system. So it's possible to have a simple check of the training success. This is why we developed something called the test and training evaluation concept, which is a combination of the Vienna test system and CogniPlus. And um, the idea behind this is that, um, for example, when you're working in a hospital and you have a new patient and you, um, you think there might be some neuropsychological deficits, at first you do a testing with the Vienna test system for example with the test set Cockpart to see if there are any deficits present then if you identified specific cognitive deficits you train them with the appropriate training program in CogniPlus and afterwards you can evaluate the training um, progress with another testing using the Vienna test system for example you, can, you could use the parallel form of the test set Cockpart for this and the combination of psychological assessment and cognitive training is important because the psychological assessment is a necessary requirement for the training selection and for the evaluation of training efficiency. So here's an example to have a look at the differences in the test and in the training programs. They actually refer to the same specific cognitive function, but they use um, different stimulus material. So we also have um, transfer effects of the training progress. On the left side, you can see our buff testing for alertness with, with a pretty basic task. There are circles, black circles, who appear on the screen. And whenever a circle appears, the client should press the green button as quickly as he or she can. And on the right side, we see the specific training program from, for alertness, which is called alert. And here, your um, motorcycle is driving. And every time a car or a rock or a tree or something similar gets into the way the client is instructed to press the green button to stop the motorcycle and afterwards the training success from the alert training can be evaluated with the WAF as well. 
So let's have a look at the cognitive functions which can be trained with Cogni Plus. You can see a list um, on the left side right here. We can train the most important um, dimensions which are um, commonly deficit in neurological disorders like attention, um, neglects, memory, executive functions, spatial processing, visual motor skills and processing speed. And as you can see, there are different kinds of tests for these different dimensions. And for each of these tests, there's a specific training program in Cogni Plus to um, train the area where the deficit is present. Currently, Cogni Plus contains 16 training programs. And you can see um, six examples on pictures right here on the right side. As I said before, we try to um, use um, modern scenarios, um, lifelike scenarios, so it's um, as motivating as possible for the patients. So now let's take a look at Cogni Plus in practice. Um, it's quite simple to do trainings with Cogni Plus to create client data and there are basically four steps. You start creating the client data, then you compile the training battery, which should always be based on neuropsychological assessment. Then there are the tra is the training phase and you can conduct the training and after each training you can have a look at the training progress. So let's start with the client data. This is how Cogni Plus basically, basically looks like. You can click right here to register a new client and then you can the, enter the client data. Name, first name, date of birth, gender, if there's a neglect present. And you can also um, insert a personal ID which can be used for direct test training which I will show you later on. You can also adapt to these different fields and customize them to your needs. So after you created the client data, then you can um, choose the training proce procedure. You can adapt the training sequence um, based on the deficits which the client has. You can choose the different trainings. You can also um, choose the training duration and the starting level for each training. And then when you started the training, um, the sequences in the beginning are always the same. There's um, an instruction phase in the beginning where the exercise is being explained. Then there's a practice phase to see if the client understood the instructions. Then there's a training phase where the client can actually train. And in the end, after each session, you can have a look at the training results. And to keep it as motivating as possible, the instruction and the practice phase are only applied for the first training session. There's an automatic adjustment of the difficulty level depending on the performance. So if somebody is good, it will get harder. If somebody didn't perform so good, it will get easier. And of course, the individual training progress is stored so that the following training session starts at the difficulty level that was worked on in the last training session. So during the performance of each training, you can always adapt and adjust the remaining time and the difficulty level. For example, if you see the client is very, very good, then you can say, oh, we just skip two levels, for example, and start on level three or four. Of course, you can also restart, pause, cancel, and skip exercises. This um, is quite um, important if the client has another question or has to go to the toilet. Of course, you can always stop the training. So, now that the training is finished, you can have a look at the reports of the training progress. Right here, you can choose the training you want the results for. You can choose if you want the overall results or results for each session. And right here, you see the um, presentation of the performance history over all previous training sessions. In this case, there was only one training session. And then you can see the progress in bar charts. There's also a logbook where each training session and each change is of the client is locked. So you always have the date and time and what has happened. And another additional option is the direct training, which enables a fully automatic administration without the supervisor. So um, 
there's a one-time setting of which the supervisor has to do where he has or he she has to create a personal identification number this personal ID which I talked about before and um, enter the identification number so and then you can basically give the laptop to your client and when he opens to the direct training at home or at your um, at your place, you can just or she can just enter the ID number and then the training which you chose for the specific client starts. So the clients can train independently. And so at your place, if you want um, three or four clients to train individually at the same place, um, you, they can do it on their own more or less with their identification number. So now. At last, I want to give you some recommendations for the training planning. Of course, individualized training is very important. The trainings should take place only after the completion of acute treatment. The training should preferably be individualized for each patient. And of course, the training selection should be based on comprehensive neuropsychological diagnostics, um, like when using the VTS and the tested Cockbart or CFD. And the selection frequency and duration of the training programs should be carried out in accordance with the level of resilience of the patient and the motivation, of course. So, and there are some general training recommendations which I want to give you. Um, regular and intensive training is more effective. Um, approximately three to five times per week, there should be a training for at least three weeks. Each training program, each specific training program should be trained at least for 20 minutes and the maximum training duration per day should not be more than 60 minutes. Of course, there should be follow-up assessments. We advise you to use a parallel form of the test you had in the primary testing so you can evaluate the training progress. And um, especially for older people who don't have so much experience with computers or very severe impairments, there should be, um, at least in the beginning, an assisting person present to help them out. So let's summarize all of this. Um, Cogni Plus is simple to operate. It's highly flexible and there's a, it's easy to individualize. We have new innovative trainings in Cogni Plus. There's an automatic difficult adjustment to the client. The results are quite transparent and detailed. All the training programs have a scientific foundation and in the German um, guidelines for neuropsychology for the Society of Neuropsychology, its recommendation strength A. So thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a pleasant day. Goodbye.